Now let us look at the other um, aspects of the IFRS 15, transition, presentation and disclosure and other impacts and challenges. So the, the, the standard is applicable from first of any period um, finishing after 1st of January 2018. So the revenue has already, the standard has already been um, applicable. Uh, if the company is uh, adopting the IFRS now for the first time, then there are two methods at which we can uh, apply the, um, the IFRS full retrospection or the modified retrospection. So full retrospection means you are going to assume uh, that each period is, uh, each prior period is going to be a separate period and you are going to um, uh, redo the entire um, IFRS 15 separately, but you don't need to restate the completed contracts already, which are uh, within the same annual period. If they are finished within the same annual period, then there is no need to uh, restate them. But if they are not finishing within the same year, then you have to restate them. And you don't need to estimate the variable consideration in the comparative periods. And also there are certain relief from the disclosure. But if you follow the modified retrospective adoption, which means we, uh, we retrospectively, we, uh, with the accumulative effect on the date of initial application, means that you would be preparing a comparative in the previous, uh, in the under the prior uh, IFRS, and it will be applied only on the existing contracts and the new contracts, not on the uh, completed contracts, even if they fall within the two years. And, but the only thing you need to do is to adjust the opening retained earnings. Uh, so that is the transition. Now, what is the presentation and disclosure requirement? So the presentation and disclosure requirements, normally you have to um, represent the contract in the as a contract asset and contract liability. So um, certain obligations you might have to represent as a contract asset, depending on the relationship between the company's performance and the customer payment. If you receive the advance, it will be your contractual liability because um, you have not earned it yet. If it is, uh, and if the company has done anything and uh, it has, it is not entitled to bill, then it will be contract asset. If they are entitled to bill, then it will become a receivable. So uh, you need to specifically separate out what should be the revenue and what should be the liabilities and how, uh, what are the contract asset and contract liabilities. So here you can see on the screen an example, uh, which is given in the IFRS itself um, that uh, the, the company enter into a contract. Uh, to deliver the product to a customer on 31st March, the contract is non-cancellable and then means you require the advance payment of 5,000 on January 31st and um, there is no, uh, is not had to pay anything until the 1st March. So on 31st of March, 31st of January, you will re uh, receive, because this non-cancellable, you can always receive, uh, always credit as a receivable and credit the contract liability first because you are not entitled to recognize the revenue yet. On March 1st, when the cash is another cash is received, uh, then you will receive the receivable. On 31st March, you will uh, satisfy the contract liability and set, uh, and uh, recognize the revenue on 31st March. So this is how the um, how the revenue is going to be recognized. So uh, on a monthly balance sheet, you will you will show contract liability or receivable or the revenue. Um, so the disclosure um, is has to be, um, we, we are also showing the disaggregation of revenue, which might be the um, additional uh, only disclosure requirement in, in addition to the I, uh, IAS 34 um, to the interim standards. Uh, the, so basically you need to disclose the disaggregation of and of the revenue information about the contract balances remaining performance obligations and the information about the performance obligation so you have to generally broadly describe it because uh, all the contracts are separate so if the, if the company has thousands of contract then it will be very difficult for them to uh, disclose each and every contract uh, performance obligation related with the, each and every single contract so you might have to group them into uh, similar contracts and then um, present the total value uh, you also have to disclose about the significant judgment and estimates in relationship with the transaction prices the allocation methods um, and the assumptions and other disclosures you might have to do is the policy decisions what kind of rate you are using the time value of money 
and what are the contract assets um, in relation with the uh, things so the disclosure requirement example is the uh, is here this is how you need to follow the the contract um, the disclosure requirements so here in this example the entity enters into two contract a and b with the separate customers to provide services and it is both two year uh, contract and non cancelable one is $100 a month and then $100 a month plus a performance bonus ranging from 0 to 100,000. And they estimate that they will be entitled to a $600 variable consideration. Uh, progress is obviously time based and uh, frequencies as and when needed. So in the first um, contract, contract A, the quantity entity has to disclose the amount of transaction price that has not been recognized yet um, as a revenue, as a table quantitative time illustrates so here you can say 2009 and 2010 um, uh, you are rec uh, recognizing 1200 um, and 9 uh, 1, 000, uh, 1200 is the total and uh, six months into 2020 total is 1800 right so that is the revenue uh, while the contract b you have to also uh, transition price is uh, 3100 into 24 plus the 600 variable so you may have to um, also look at that uh, recognized evenly over a period of 24 months that is 1500 per year um, and then 1005 divided by 2 750 so for six months 1750 so this is how you need to recognize and disclose the how much is the uh, what is the transaction price? What is the allocation? How we are allocating the um, performance bonus? How we quantifically, uh, how we are estimating that we are going to get the performance bonus? So these are all the disclosure requirements in the uh, performance obligation. These are some additional uh, performance des uh, uh, disaggregation of revenue. So basically, the revenue. Uh, Disaggregation, as you know, the um, and uh, in the segmentation uh, segment, uh, IFR is related to segments. You have to segment by geography, by the, the significant market, and also by the product or services that we are selling. So here uh, is the importance of the allocation of the transaction price that we have seen in the past. If the transaction price allocation is not correct, then the this segmentation, the, dis, the disaggregation of revenue will definitely will not be correct as well. So we have to be very careful in this. Uh, it's also you can dis disaggregation of revenue can also be the type of contract means the fixed fixed price contract or the time and material contract. It can be short term, long term. It can be the timing of the revenue recognition at a point over a period of time and the sales channels. So these are the additional disaggregation of revenue that we have to provide in the IFRS. So uh, the companies might have to see how they are going to provide this market segmentation. Uh, the accounting standards, uh, the accounting records and the revenue records has to be probably uh, uh, modified in the way to to capture this information on an ongoing basis. So this can be quite challenging uh, to provide this kind of uh, benefit, this kind of disclosure. So the impact um, challenges and issues related to the uh, IFRS 15 we are going to discuss in the next video.